I'm Chris Sims. And I'm Franco Terzano. This is the Canadian Taxpayers Podcast. We're dedicated to lower taxes, less waste, and more accountable government. In our deep dive, we're going to talk about a second carbon tax that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is about to hammer all Canadians with. For real. And in Waste Watch, we're going to tell you about the city of Vancouver blowing more than $300,000 on deluxe designer office furniture. But first, let's check in with Franco. He's here. Franco, what do you have for us today? Well, Chris, uh, the Feds just gave the throne speech, and that's when they outlined their priorities for the upcoming session. And uh, yeah, let's just say it doesn't seem like there's much good news for taxpayers. And that's because the Trudeau government seems to be using this health crisis as an excuse to splurge on some big ticket items that, uh, yeah, we couldn't even afford before the pandemic hit. Yeah, for sure. We actually had a little bit of a watch party here at the Taxpayers Federation. We were all listening for things like spending restraint and fiscal restraint. But this actually reminds me of when I'm busy on the phone and my kids know it. So I'm stuck doing something important. And that's when they dive into the cookie and chips cupboard. That's when they start splurging. Uh, You were listening along with us at the throne speech. What really caught your eye? Well, you know, we definitely didn't hear much about fiscal responsibility, but we did hear some potential massive red flags. And that's because it looks like Trudeau and our new finance minister, Christy Freeland, are gearing up to dump a bunch of money into some uh, pet industries and pet businesses. Now, I want to read a few quotes for you that suggest to me that taxpayers need to be having a tight grip on their wallets. Here's the first quote. The government will launch a new fund to attract investments in making zero emissions products. And here's the second quote. And make zero emissions vehicles more affordable while investing in more charging stations across the country. Yeah, I hear affordable in that last quote, but let me tell you, there's nothing in this throne speech that screams affordability to me. Now, you know, we saw a lot of reactions to this throne speech, but I think the best one has to go to Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. Here's what Kenney said. It was a fantasy plan for a mythical country that only exists apparently in the minds of Ottawa liberals and like-minded Laurentian elites that forgets about the, the regions and the resource workers who have been the motor of Canadian prosperity in recent decades. The throne speech also talked about extending the federal wage subsidy until next summer. Listen. We've all had a tough time. We know that COVID has been awful for most people. But the only way we're ever going to have a chance of pulling ourselves out of this ocean of red ink is if the government actually commits to ending this so-called one-time emergency funding. That's got to happen. So this is very concerning that they're kicking the can until next summer. The throne speech also mentioned that, quote, the government will launch a campaign to create over one million jobs, end quote. Franco... Government creating one million jobs. How do you interpret that? Well, I mean, one million jobs uh, sounds like a nice thing, but uh, let's just say when governments try to create jobs, the taxpayers end up paying big time. Ottawa Strategic Innovation Fund created jobs, but at a cost to taxpayers of $159,000 per job. So if Trudeau tries to create those one million jobs at that same cost, well, taxpayers will end up paying a whopping $150 billion. That is just staggering. We, we don't have the money for this stuff. You know, we heard a whole lot about Trudeau's grand spending visions and things that he would like to do. But all we heard on fiscal responsibility was crickets, nothing, pin drop. Listen, the federal deficit is closing in on $400 billion. We are steamrolling headlong towards a $1 trillion national debt. But in the throne speech, it gave us no indication whatsoever that the feds are going to do anything about it. They didn't mention how they were going to fight it. They don't even seem to recognize that it exists. It's like they're just ignoring some monster charging into their room. Trudeau seems to be shrugging this deficit off, and I'm not sure that he's remotely concerned about the state of the country's finances at all. You couldn't tell from the throne speech. Yeah, there was definitely no indication of spending restraint from that throne speech. And uh, we'll definitely need all hands on deck here from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and our supporters to stop Trudeau from spending Canada broke. So there wasn't any good news on the spending side for taxpayers. And uh, 
yeah, there wasn't much good news for taxpayers on the tax side either. There were some hints to new tax hikes that potentially may be coming our way, which could include some type of wealth tax or internet tax. You know, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on those. But for now, let's jump to my conversation with, uh, with our Prairie Director, Todd McKay, about Trudeau's plans to introduce a second carbon tax. It's time to take a deep dive into important topics for taxpayers. Franco, you've got a big carbon tax policy that we need to talk about. Start taking us through that. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's bad enough that Trudeau is making it more expensive for us to heat our homes and to fuel up our cars with his carbon tax. And it's doubly bad enough that Trudeau hiked his carbon tax this spring during the midst of an economic crisis, while I must say carbon tax burdens in other countries were going down in response to COVID-19. But it gets worse because now we're finding out that the Trudeau government is planning on hammering Canadians with a second carbon tax. Yeah, the timing on this is really bad. People are really struggling. The economy is just limping along. Now you're going to pile another great big carbon tax on people. Franco, tell us about that, though. This isn't replacing the current carbon tax. This is another one. What does that look like? Well, first, that's a really important point to know is that this isn't replacing the current carbon tax. It's being piled on top of the already costly carbon tax. And now Trudeau's second carbon tax will be introduced as a regulation, uh, what the government is, is going to be calling a clean fuel standard. Now, the regulations haven't been released, so we don't have the full details, but the National Post and John Iverson broke the story about the clean fuel standard, and this is how Iverson described it. It will be, quote, a regulatory regime that will require all supplies of fossil fuel to reduce carbon content, end quote. Now, if producers can't meet the requirements, they will have to buy credits priced at $350 per ton of carbon dioxide. Um, but you can be sure that these costs will be passed on to consumers and, and everyday businesses. You know, as Iveson notes, quote, the extra charges coming to consumers and businesses will be costly as home heating bills and the price of the pump dig even more deeply into Canadian pockets. Yeah, and let me just stop you right there. The last thing Canadians need right now are more uh, costs and higher costs. The feds, really what they're doing here is they're trying to make uh, energy producers and others uh, use uh, different techniques and fuel sources to reduce carbon. That sounds lovely, but a lot of these things are very expensive. If they can't make that work, they get hammered with a $350 a ton carbon tax. And let's get some context there. The current carbon tax is $30 dollars a ton. That means what they're talking about here is 10 times more expensive. And already the carbon tax costs Canadians about 6.7 cents per liter of gasoline. Yeah, this is going to be real expensive. And you know, when Canadians hear clean fuel standard, they should be thinking Trudeau's second carbon tax. Now for even more context, a $350 per ton carbon tax, well, that would add about an extra $60 just to fill up your family's minivan. And that extra $60, that's not the price of gasoline. That's the extra cost of the tax. And again, that's on top of the current carbon tax. That's not instead of or replacing. It's on top of the current carbon tax and all of the other taxes uh, that we pay. Man, that's coming at a bad time. People are just limping along right now trying to figure out how they're going to get through this pandemic crisis. And now the government's talking about uh, ramping up a massive new carbon tax. The thing that's particularly baffling about this is just a few weeks ago, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was on TV saying Canadians are struggling. The last thing they need are higher taxes. But listen, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's listen to a clip. So will taxes be going up then? No. Uh, the last thing Canadians need uh, is to see a raise in taxes right now. Uh, millions of Canadians are out of work and looking for work. The economy is still uh, nowhere near uh, where we need it to be. Uh, we have work to do and we are not going to be saddling Canadians with extra costs. So that was Prime Minister Justin Trudeau saying that Canadians don't need higher taxes. They don't need more costs. And yet... We're seeing very clearly the writing on the wall that he's going to bring forward a second carbon tax, one that's frankly more poorly constructed and more expensive than the first one. 
I'm not sure if Prime Minister Trudeau fully understands what this looks like for families and uh, small businesses in the country, because boy, that's a lot of money and a heavy burden. Yeah, and I'm not really sure that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau understands the full impact that this is going to have on on our energy industry as well. And, you know, this is going to be scary expensive for families and businesses at the worst possible time. You know, what I'm also so concerned about, especially being from Alberta, is, is the damaging impact that this is going to be having on our energy sector. And, you know, the $350 per ton carbon tax it, it is so expensive on purpose, right? It's to try and turn people away from fossil fuels. And here's another very telling quote from Iveson, um, where he writes, Trudeau's environment minister, Jonathan Wilkinson, is said to have requested an internal study to find out the break point, the price that would be required for people to turn away from fossil fuels, end quote. You know, I, I just don't know if Trudeau understands that there is no recovery for Canada without a recovering and thriving energy sector. Um, you know, Trudeau doesn't seem to get that because he's hammering people and he's hammering our industry who have been kicked and kicked and kicked, not for just months, but for years now. We have been kicked while we're down. It looks like we're going to be getting kicked again while we're down. Yeah, and that's why the Canadian Taxpayers Federation is jumping on this second carbon tax already. Listen, they're not even finished uh, printing the regs. We're already getting into that fight. That's exactly why we're here. We don't wait for politicians to bring forward bad policies. We start fighting them before they happen. The last thing Canadian families and small businesses need is a great big new carbon tax weighing them down on top of the one they've already got. But let's talk about that carbon tax we've already got for a moment too, because we're well into that fight. And in fact, we took that fight to the Supreme Court of Canada. Franco, tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I'm happy to talk about that because on September 23rd, we presented our arguments to the Supreme Court of Canada to oppose Trudeau's current carbon tax. And, you know, we were very proud. I'm, I'm so proud to be um, a part of a team which was the only non-government intervener standing on the side of taxpayers and fighting against Trudeau's carbon tax. And I'm sure our listeners will remember that we are fighting in the Saskatchewan uh, court and in Ontario and in Alberta as well. And in Alberta, we actually won that court challenge. Um, but let me just lay down some of the CTF's legal arguments. I mean, first and foremost, we're arguing that a carbon tax is most certainly a tax. It's not a fee. It's not a levy or any other type of federal creation. And we're, ch we're challenging the constitutionality of the carbon tax legislation because it allows the prime minister to impose carbon taxes um, without letting members of parliament vote. But, you know, according to the constitution, only parliament has the right to impose taxes on Canadians. And that comes back to the very important and fundamental principle of no taxation without representation. And you know, Todd, we don't know when, the, uh, when we're going to hear the ruling, but we do expect the verdict to, to be in at least a couple more months from now. Yeah, it's always hard to know uh, what Supreme Court justices will do. Definitely hard to know exactly when they're going to do it. But listen, we feel very confident that we brought very persuasive arguments, well thought through legal arguments. And so, you know what, we're, uh, we're feeling pretty good, but it really all comes down to a bottom line point. The carbon tax costs people a lot of money, but it doesn't help the environment. Just last week, we had Chris Sims in, our BC director. She was looking at the numbers in British Columbia. Emissions there are going up, even though that province has the biggest carbon tax in the country. A carbon tax simply does not work. Yeah. And, you know, I think we need to look at things globally here as well, because at the end of the day, uh, Canada only makes up about 1.5% of global emissions. So, I mean, even if the feds manage to bring our economy to a screeching halt, which I mean, sometimes it looks like that's what they're trying to do. It wouldn't even do much for the global environment. And, you know, that's a point that Trudeau himself has acknowledged. And I want to read you a direct quote straight from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, quote, even if Canada stopped everything tomorrow and the other countries didn't have any solutions, it wouldn't make a big difference, end quote. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that uh, we've got to uh, um, have a workable regulatory system for our energy sector. In China, if they want to you know, roll back some of their coal-fired plants, they can replace that with cleaner uh, natural gas from Canada. That's something that's good for the uh, economy, but it's also good for Canadian jobs. That's why we're also uh, fighting against the carbon tax. We're fighting against Trudeau's second carbon tax that's coming down the pipe. Listen, you can find out more about this at taxpayer.com. 
Uh, we've got a petition to stop Trudeau's second carbon tax. We've also got uh, those links in the show notes. Check them out. Hi, I'm Scott Hennig, president of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Sorry for interrupting the podcast, but I wanted to take a few seconds of your time to tell you more about the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. We are 235,000 Canadians from coast to coast that are fed up. We are fed up with politicians taking too much out of our paychecks, often to waste it on a bunch of pet projects, corporate welfare, and pork barreling to buy votes. We organize campaigns to push back on these politicians. These campaigns often include petition drives, billboards, media stunts, and more. But most importantly, they ask our supporters to pitch in and take action. Alone, we're a voice in the wilderness. Together, we're an army to be reckoned with. You can join the fight and sign up at no cost at taxpayer.com. That website again is taxpayer.com. Okay, now back to the podcast. It's time for Waste Watch. Yep, the funny and infuriating part of the show when we tell you all about the bad ways that politicians are burning through your tax dollars. Chris, you're back, and I hear you got a good one for us out from Vancouver. I sure do. So do you remember back when Vancouver Mayor Kennedy Stewart was begging all of Canada for money? He was cap in hand, asking taxpayers from Moncton to Medicine Hat for their tax dollars because he said that his cupboards are bare. Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, it's starting to ring a bell. Yeah, not so much. Turns out Mayor Stewart's crew just spent more than $300,000 on luxury office furniture for City Hall. And he did this in May after he went begging the feds for money. $300,000 on luxury office furniture? I don't even think I could spend that much money on furniture if I tried. Yeah, I'm not even mad. That's just impressive. Now, I'm just kidding, Chris. I'm pretty mad because that's tax dollars he's wasting at the worst possible time. You should be mad, and plenty of us are hopping mad out here too. Now, this is part of a multi-million dollar renovation going on at Vancouver City Hall. And to be fair, Vancouver City Hall as a structure is beautiful. It's Art Deco. It was built at the turn of the last century. But we're not piling on for asbestos remediation or something like that. No, this is $300,000 on deluxe fancy office furniture. And they were consolidating from bigger offices down to smaller offices. You'd think they would have had furniture around that they could have actually used. So how it happened is this global news reporter, great guy, Jordan Armstrong, just happened to be there at City Hall at the time, walking by with his camera, looks over, and he sees this big furniture truck backing up. Beep, beep, beep. So he looks over and he sees chair after designer chair being unloaded from this truck. Franco, these were Herman Miller designer chairs. Yeah, I gotta cut. I gotta come clean to you on something here, Chris. I shop at IKEA <laughs> mostly. Uh, I've never even heard of this Herman Miller person. <laughs> it sounds like to me like the the Louis Vuitton of office chairs. I think next you're gonna be telling me about the uh, these Rolls Royce umbrellas that these bureaucrats <laughs> are walking around with out there in the rainy city of Vancouver. Yeah, you nailed it, actually. Uh, Herman Miller, super famous uh, office furniture designer. In fact, the only reason why I knew his name is because I watch Antiques Roadshow. And some of the fancy stuff from the 50s and 60s, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars for those things. So that's literally the only reason why I knew the name. And you're absolutely right with the comparison to Rolexes or Rolls Royces. Um, so yeah, one of these office chairs, and they're the cheaper ones that Vancouver City Hall bought. One of them costs $1,500, $1,500 each. And for the little tiny plastic guest chairs that people sit in, $600 each. And I got to be clear, these things kind of look like plastic picnic table chairs. This is like replacing your entire maintenance vehicle fleet with Lamborghinis. Yeah, this whole story is absolutely crazy. And it just shows how out of touch uh, this city hall is. So what's going to be happening next? So happily, people were super ticked about it, and it made a lot of news. It actually led the newscast and bumped COVID from its top spot for the first time in, like, weeks. So we here at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we're demanding that Mayor Stewart dig around in those fancy desk drawers and find the receipts for these chairs and send them all back. We want a refund for taxpayers. So far, he says he's looking into it. 
yeah, well, the mayor better do more than just look into it. He better find that shoebox full of receipts and, and get taxpayers' money back on this one. You know, this is a crazy story coming from Vancouver, but, you know, we're hearing similar stories from other municipalities um, as well. We're, we're hearing them crying poor before they have even cut the fat. Councillors, mayors, these are tough times for everyone. You got to cut spending before you look for more taxpayers' money. But don't you worry. We're going to continue to hold these politicians' feet to the fire, and you can definitely bet that we're going to be staying on this one. All right, that's the show. Hope you enjoyed it. But before we let you go, we got to say thanks, a huge thanks, to our investigative journalist and our editor, Jimbo, for making us sound uh, at least somewhat intelligible. He's also known as James Wood. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And be sure to tell that one person that you think would like this show all about our podcast and ask them to sign up. Talk to you next week. Hi, I'm Scott Hennig, president of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. If you've got another minute, I'd like to ask you to think about the one person you know that would really enjoy listening to this podcast. Do us a favor and do them a favor and send them a quick note to let them know about it. At the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we believe there is power in numbers. That's why we've worked so hard to build an army of taxpayers who are ready to push back. And we did it because people like you shared our work with that one person that they knew would really appreciate taking part. Thanks for listening, and thanks for doing your part to make Canada a better place.